Okay guys, so in this video I'm gonna walk you through a Hello World example with Rocket using Rust, so let's get into it. So we're gonna basically cover how to stir up some static text, some static files, how to render a template, and how to stir up some JSON. So just a disclaimer first and foremost, I'm not a Rust expert or anything like that. There's plenty of people who know more about Rust than me, but I am very, very interested and very excited about this language. So this is a very common application. I, st I, like, I start building when I just want to feel some stuff out. And the reason why I picked Rocket is because it is the web framework in Rust that I've found so far to be most in line with the standard way that most web framework work in other languages that are pretty much as mainstream as it gets. And that's always a good thing. It's always a good thing if a tool in a new language, which is a bit new to you, is fairly in line with the way that other languages that are mainstream actually work, or rather the web frameworks that they have and Rocket fills this very well. So I think there's a lot of promise here. So let's have a look at my cargo file where basically I've just declared my dependencies. And that's about it really. I'm just declaring that I'm depending on Rocket and that I'm depending on Surday, which is at, as far as I know, the most popular way of doing JSON serialization, deserialization in Rust. And then we are depending on Rocket Contrib, which is basically just a package which contains a bunch of modules that are supplements to Rocket itself, where we have the Terra template uh, crate and the JSON crate and the serve crate. And basically this allows us to do, this is going to allow us to do templating, this is going to allow us to send JSON, and this is going to allow us to serve up, you know, oh, well, you, you will see that in just a moment. So basically this is my entire application. So the more normal, like for a web developer, the thing that you usually make first and foremost is the hello world application and then you go on to do something other than something else that is fairly trivial like a to-do and so forth but that's another video so as you can see here i'm basically just doing making my imports and serve as you i mentioned earlier is just going to allow me to in this case serve up some static files and the templates crate that I got from my templates dependency is going to allow me to do templating and rendering and all that good stuff. And then I have a dependency on the JSON crate, which is going to allow me to actually send JSON responses. And then I have declared my own little module here called lib, which is going to import a foo and a bar. And all that is, is that I have this little module file here, which is exporting these two public modules. And all it's going to do is that it's going to Take, export these uh, very trivial data structures, which is, well, yeah, it's basically just these two here. And then basically all I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna declare these different endpoints. And as you can see here, this should feel fairly similar. It feels very familiar to me with this pattern where, all right, so you have some type of route handler or route declaration. And then you declare your different function, like functions that are going to handle the incoming request. In this case, I'm not actually declaring any incoming request because it's just a Hello World application. And that's about it, really. So we have a few examples here. And then you kick off the server by doing this, basically, where we call Ignite on the rocket crate. And then I add, well, using the routes macro to the root route, these route handlers. And then I also add one for static files so that I can actually serve up those. And then I actually I add a template fairing, which basically allows me to do templating. And finally, I call launch, which is going to start the server. And as you can see here, it's already started. It's already running. So if I refresh this page, it's just going to say hello world. And basically what's happening is that we're hitting this endpoint here. And this endpoint, all it does is that it returns a static, a well, a stir type which is going to be a, we just have a lifespan of static, which basically means that it's going to be it's going to be in memory for as long as this program is running. So that's about it, really. And then I have added something like this, where I call this route static. So if I go and do slash static like this, we get a static HTML page. And what's going to come over the network is this this little response here, which is just a web page. And if we have a look at 
what's actually happening here. So what I have here is this nice little interface called named file, which allows me to call open. And what open is going to return is or that it's going to take a path to a file of some sort. And it's going to give me the correct MIME type. And it's also going to return a result of name file because, you know, in theory, I could give it a reference to something that doesn't exist. And since I'm, you know, I know that this file is living right there, I'm just going to unwrap this and not handle the error case. And then it's going to return it with the proper MIME type, which it's going to infer from the file extension. And this is the file. It's a very simple little HTML file and nothing super fancy about it, really. And that's what you're seeing right here. And if I click foo and I go to slash foo, what's going to happen is that I'm going to hit this endpoint here. And this time I'm going to render something. So this is where this foo struct comes in. So basically what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the templates in create and I'm going to call render on it. And as you can see here, all it's going to take is a string or like a name of the, the name of the file that I want to render and a context. And the context is just a key value store of some, some form that I can reference from within my template. And the templating engine that I choose shows for this application was Terra. And basically all I have to do is to do this, where I can use this bracket syntax in order to render out my message. And so that's pretty much what's happening here. All it's going to do is that it's going to look for a file called index and by, by default, the place it's going to look in is it's this directory called templates. I can change this if I wanted to, but since this is just a Hello World application, I didn't feel the need to. And then I give it a reference to or I'll, I give it a reference to the context, which is this little thing here. And basically, you no. Know, this thing here and then I just reference the property on that uh, on that struct it doesn't have to be a struct it could be it could be a hash map as well as long as there's a key value structure to it it seems to work very well and if we go back and I click bar we will see that hey I got this message here which is just JSON basically which is coming over the wire. So if we look at that, we'll see here that I'm using the JSON interface where I declare a struct of bar and then I use this JSON function here. And all I'm going to do, or well, the struct, the JSON struct rather, and this is going to take my struct and I just declare some hard coded values here and I return it. And that's pretty much it. That's how I send back JSON. So I personally, I feel very, I mean, it feels very intuitive once you kind of get how this all works and it feels pretty good. One thing I want to touch on is this thing here. You notice that I have declared my file or rather my in my file here I've declared that I want the key such wow to be snake cased. But if I go to the response you'll see that it's actually camel cased. And the reason why that that is is because well I want it to behave that way because the normal practice for doing like the standard practice or the conventions for JSON is to use camel casing but since in Rust it's convention to use snake casing I did this little thing here which I thought was pretty nice that survey actually allows me a Mac gives me a procedural a procedural macro that allows me to say or write you know basically declare that I want these well, at the serialization stage I want to declare that the, or rather the casing strategy that Serde is going to use in order to serialize my or to serialize my structure or my struct here. So I declare that to just be camel case which is the standard well the convention for for JSON and that's about it really. So yeah this is pretty much my little side project. Nothing much, nothing much to it but basically this is a for like me experimenting a little bit with Rust and using a web framework. And I can see a lot of potential in this. So we will explore more in depth things in a future video. Hopefully you found this little tutorial useful. Have a great day.